Hello and welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Millie and I love any makeup, especially shiny, shifty, and sparkly eyeshadows. Today, I have more Davina eyeshadows to show you. These launched back in November for Black Friday and I just did a video on the Moonscapes collection. If you're interested, it is already up. I will link it down in the description box. But today, we're gonna be talking about the other two collections, the Laveau collection as well as the Carnival Suites collection. Also, they came out with this empty palette which has a beautiful design on it. I like that it's a larger empty palette since I do have quite a bit of Davina eyeshadows and I did receive this palette as well as the single eyeshadows from the newest collections from Davina so thank you so much for sending these to me and I do have an affiliate code with Davina it is Millie20 in case you're interested in picking any of these up or any of their other shadows they will be restocking all three collections tomorrow at 12 p.m. PST so definitely make sure you set an alarm you make a wish list so it's really nice and easy to just add to cart and check out because they do tend to sell out so I'm going to be showing you some swatches some swatch comparisons as always and then I'll be doing four looks with with both of these collections and then at the end of the video I'll give you some of my thoughts as always so let's get right into it. So at the top is 347 from Davina and below that is Emerald Waves from Bitter Lace Beauty. And these look, they feel exactly the same. They look super, super sparkly. And they just, even the tone, just everything looks pretty much identical. I mean, even the shift. Below that, I swatched Ritual from Davina versus Ice Queen from Bitter Lace Beauty. And again, these look pretty much exactly the same. They have that darker grayish base, super sparkly. They have the same texture to the touch. I do want to say Ritual was much easier to swatch versus Ice Queen. Ice Queen, the sparklies just didn't really want to stay on. So I had to do two layers of that shade. But Next up for comparisons is Zombie and this is the new Zombie. So the color is different than the original Zombie versus Royal Facet. This is one half of Royal Facet. And below that is Seance versus Royal Facet. And these again felt exactly the same. They look, I would say, almost identical even in the shifts the Davina shades did swatch just slightly better but yep these are so sparkly and so beautiful but they do have that black base and the shifts are just a little bit more subtle Midnight Sun from Davina at the top Blood Moon from Terra Moons below that Something Wicked from Pariah House below that Dark Matter from Lethal Cosmetics and lastly is Lights Out from Carla Cosmetics and I would say these are all pretty much right on par they feel very smooth. They're not very shiny. Out of all of these, I think Lights Out might have like kind of the most shine to it, but these all pretty much just very much turn into completely satin shadows on the lid. They're not very, very metallic, but I haven't used the Midnight Sun shade from Davina on the lid yet, so of course I can't speak for that one, but it seems like in general, these all have the same texture. Must be something about the pigment that is just only available in this kind of finish. First up for comparisons, we have Rain Tarts from Davina versus X-Ray from Terra Moons, Swatch from Davina, and Enamel from Cleona. These are all extremely similar. I think, if anything, X-Ray is almost spot on to Rain Tarts. I think that one is the closest. You can see Swatch is a bit more of a blue, like an aqua blue. I think Enamel has a little bit of a different tone to it but it also has a bit more of a color to it versus a translucent base. Next up is Twinkle Toots from Davina then Half Moon from Terra Moons and below that Counting Stars from Terra Moons. Half Moon is also pretty spot on to Twinkle Toots. If anything I think Twinkle Toots is more shifty. The shift is more obvious but the straight on tone of them and also the texture of them is very very similar, very sparkly. A little bit on the sheer side. They have a lot of shine to it. And Counting Stars you can tell is much more green and also the shift is different. Next up for comparison we have Bubble Fizz and Taffy Bomb both from Davina and these are actually really really close. I think that if you have Taffy Bomb that you do not need Bubble Fizz. Bubble Fizz might have a little bit more of a base color to it so it's not quite as iridescent. So I think it's also going to show even more opaque when you're layering it over a black eyeshadow. Except for comparison is Sprinkle Whips from Davina, Wavelength from Terra Moons, and Tracery from Cleona. Obviously Cleona is much more pigmented, much more purple, a bit different. 
between wavelength and sprinkle whips. I think they're very, very, very close to each other. There's maybe just some slight just differences I think that you can see when it's shifting, but otherwise they're very similar in texture as well, though I do think that Sprinkle Whips is sparklier and shinier just a little bit. It's got a little bit more of a texture to it compared to Wavelength. Also, Wavelength is no longer available. I just checked on the website. It is no longer up there, so Sprinkle Whips will be a good option if you missed out on that shade. Next up is Sweet Slush from Davina and Andromeda from Terra Moons. These are pretty much spot on. Extremely similar, if not pretty much the same. Even in texture, they feel very, very similar, very sparkly. They have just a little bit of a textured feeling to them when you're touching them and you're swatching them so they have that sparkly, super, super shiny effect to them. I think that Andromeda is still available on the Terra Moons website. So if you have the shade, you don't need the shade and vice versa if you'd rather buy the Sweet Slush shade. Next up, we have all yellow shades from Davina Cosmetics. So at the top is Butter Pucker, then Vela, then Gumballs, and then Pancake Bubbles. So definitely some similarities at different tones, different kinds of shifts. All very, very sparkly as always. I think Gumballs might be the most similar, but even then it's got just a bit of a different tone. And Butter Pucker does have just more of a base color to it. It's less translucent. Next up is Sour Spanx from Davina, and below that is Meteorite from Terra Moons Cosmetics. And these are very, very similar, extremely similar. If you have one, you don't need the other. I'm not sure if this one is available on the Terra Moons website, but you can see that even the shift and just everything is very, very similar. If anything, maybe like right here, there's a little bit of a different base on Meteorite. It's just a little bit darker, more reddish, but I really feel like these are extremely comparable. And the last of the swatch comparisons, we have Fairy Fire from Davina compared with Space Baby, which is an iridescent multi-chrome from Terra Moons. And this is really like one of the only shades I could really compare because there's I don't have anything like Fairy Fire. They do look very similar straight on and in the shift a little bit similar, but Fairy Fire has a yellowish base. I think you can see that while Space Baby is indeed just iridescent. So whatever base you put it on is what it's going to take on. And the shift is just a different tone. And honestly, just when you see Fairy Fire in person, it's so dimensional. There's so many shifts you can see through it. It is actually pretty different from Space Baby and I this is probably one of my most favorite shades now like I just the moment I swatched it I completely fell in love with this shade. For the mattes I'm going to be using the Giant Wolves palette which is the collaboration palette between Odin's Eye and Nets Makeup Corner. Going in with Howling straight into the crease. This is going to be a smoky look for sure and I have some shimmer all over my brush because I need to change out my brush cleaning rag. I'm taking a blaze. I'm just going to slowly work that in above that shade. These mattes are just so easy to use. I've been really loving Odin's eye mattes. That took no time. I'm just blown away. I would love to see them do like a matte palette maybe, just like predominantly mattes. Just going back in a little bit with Howling. And then going in with Cosmos on the outer corner. Just gonna blend that out. And I'm gonna also bring that under my lower lash line to connect to the outer corner. Just gonna go back in with a little bit more of this shade. And then I'm taking a clean brush with some translucent powder and just further blending out the edges. I'm gonna use the Gimme Glow Glow Harder Primer which is basically like the NYX glitter glue. I'm doing a half cut crease situation with that. Just taking it above my hood and tapping it outwards. I dipped into 347 from Davina. I'm just gonna pop that right over that. I'm gonna take it on an angle closer to my lash line. Oh, so sparkly, so sparkly. Definitely needs a glitter glue. And then above that, I'm going in with Rain Tarts. Whoa, that packs a punch. It almost looks like an iridescent kind of sparkly shade, but has a little bit of more color to it in the pan. 
Oh, that's so pretty. That even just layered on its own over these shadows would be so gorgeous. And I'm taking a blaze. I'm just gonna put it right next under my lower lash line. And I'm taking that shade as my inner corner highlight as well. Definitely feel like wetting the brush or even putting a dot of the primer down will help adhere this a bit better. So here's the first finished look. Going in with Desolate and popping that right into the crease. I'm actually going to take it into my outer corner as well. Could be my deepening up shade. Then I'm going to take Azure and just slowly blend it into that. Right above my crease. Kind of overlapping the shade. And back in with Desolate. Blend it out here a little bit. And I'm going to take it under my little lash line, but just a little bit. I'm not going to take it all the way. And then going in with Annihilation, I'm just going to deepen that up right against my lash line. Just a little bit. Totally just overtake everything with this shade. Going back in with Desolate. And just blending that out. And I switched my brush so I can better blend this something fluffier here I'm trying to blend it into like a V just going back in with a little bit more azure and then taking some translucent powder and blending above that putting on some glow harder primer from gimme glow again I'm going to do another half quick crease situation so just taking it and spreading it around on my lid taking zombie and doing basically what I did on the other lid and just taking it close to my lash line on an angle and just tapping it on over the glue and then taking Twinkle Toots and putting that above that. Wow! That is so beautiful. Again, it looks a little bit like an iridescent shade but with just like a bit more punch to it. For the inner corner, I'm actually going to go in with Bubble Fizz. I picked up way too much. I picked up way too much. But that is such a beautiful inner corner highlight shade. Here's a second finished look. I'm going to be using the Sugar Pill Fun Size 2 palette for this look. Going in with Power Up. I'm just going to pop it right into the crease and onto the lid. It's gonna be more of a springy look on this side with these shades I'm about to use. Then taking loading next to that. And then final boss out here. And I'm gonna use a double jump to help on that out. Go back in with final boss. A little bit more, it is kind of sticking down just a little bit. I'm gonna double jump right above that. Taking final boss under my lower lash line and blending it out. Taking Gimme Glow Glow Harder, and I'm just gonna put on a really small amount. I'm just gonna take it all over my lid and up into my crease a little bit, tapping it on. First, going in with Butter Pucker. Oh, that is so shiny. Then a sweet slush in the center. And sprinkle whips on the outer corner. Oh, that is such a fun, pastel, springy look. Here's the third finished look. For this look, I'm going to be going in with the Blend Bunny Blends palette. First going in with Lux, and I'm just going to be putting that into my crease, onto the outer corner as well. Taking Remedy and just starting to blend that into that. Just 
a little bit above it, but also overlapping the dark green. And then inside joke. And I'm just gonna bring the lugs under my lower lash line. I'm gonna go back in with, between a remedy and inside joke and just perfect this blend a little bit. I'm taking just a little bit of Nevermore to deepen it up right here against my lash line. Come back in with Lux. Just mixing them together. I'm going in with the Fernie Pixie Epoxy because the shade Fairy Fire is very finely milled. To help it stick down, I like to tap this out. Just make sure there's not too much on. Picked up Fairy Fire. Oh, it's so beautiful. Oh my god, it's so beautiful. <gasps> wow. Wow. You can definitely see like some transparency, at least I can, from my angle, where I don't have a base down. So this will look really fun over like a darker matte eyeshadow, kind of like out here. But this is such a stunning shade. I'll blend the shimmers out here. I don't really mind having shimmers all the way into my crease. They're gonna end up there anyway, so might as well already have them in there. Oh, this shade is so stunning. And I'm using Sour Spanx as the inner corner highlight. I did wet my brush to help just get more pigmentation down. Here's the forced finished look. Out of all the newer shades, I definitely recommend Fairy Fire. It is just so stunning. It is very smooth, very metallic, so, so shifty. Like, honestly, the camera cannot even capture it once you see it in real life. Like, it is so stunning. Probably one of my most favorite multi-chromes from now on, for sure. It is going to be getting mentioned in all my favorites videos. I can already see it. It is just so, so stunning. It's basically like a rainbow multi-chrome. And I love that it is a little bit more on the translucent side, so you can kind of layer it over some deeper matte eyeshadows, colorful eyeshadows, whatever your heart desires. As for the Laveau collection, if you watch my Bare Lace Beauty video that I did, pretty recently within the last two weeks on the new Diamond Transformer shades. These are basically exactly the same. Not only do they feel the same, they look pretty much the same in terms of the tones and the shift as well. And if you saw in my Bitterlace Beauty video, I wasn't the biggest fan of these particular shades because they do have quite a bit of a darker gray base. That just means that you're going to get quite a bit of a smoky look whenever you use these eyeshadows. However, I do prefer these much more to the Bitter Lace Beauty highlighters especially. I think these are just much more pigmented. They're about the same sparkle level, but these just, I had better time applying them and swatching them. So not only are these a much better value to purchase these than the split pans from Bitter Lace Beauty, but also I feel like these are a better formula. Now with those Bitter Lace Beauty highlighters, they are $25 for the split pans and you do get six grams of product. So about like double of each of these shades, but also with these, you can kind of just pick and choose which shades you want instead of having to buy pre chosen shades in a pan so these are just such a better value and they do feel like they're a better formula so I would recommend these over those but if you did end up getting those then I do think that you could skip on these because they're just pretty close in terms of just the color and the shift like I said as for the carnival sweets I absolutely love these I love how bright they are and I love that they have a little bit more of a base color to them as you saw in the swatch comparisons I do have pretty much almost exact shades from Terra Moon so I would say if there's any Terra Moon shades that you you love that look like these and they don't have them anymore on the website and you missed out then these are definitely a great option I do even feel like the texture was pretty similar these are right on par with everything that you can expect with Divina eyeshadows they give you that shine they give you that sparkle however these are not like the most shifty same with the Laveau so I wouldn't say like these are like super multi-chromatic shadows but they're still extremely dimensional they look really beautiful you have the option of layering them like they're super fun so I think if you don't have anything like this and you like the way that these look and you think these are something that you would like to wear, then I do recommend them. And if you're interested about the Moonscapes collection, definitely check out my video. And that's everything for this video. Let me know in the comments below if you picked any of these up during launch or if you plan on getting them during tomorrow's restock. I would love to hear your thoughts. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you're new my channel, I would love it if you subscribe. There's so much any makeup content uploading my channel and much more to come. You don't want to miss out. So thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.